Hi guys, I'm Chloe from the Careers Portal. Today I sat down with Nico from Girl Code. We chatted about getting more women involved in coding, the coding boot camps that they're running, and she also explained a little bit of coding lingo for us non-coders. I hope that you enjoy. So today we're joined by Tinico from Girl Code. Um, we're very, very happy to um, have the chance to interview you. So welcome. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, so we're just going to get started straight away. Could you tell me what GoCode is um, and how did you start? Okay, um, so GoCode is a social enterprise um, that aims to empower young girls and women through technology. And we achieve this by teaching coding and robotics to girls and women um, of different ages. And GoCode was founded in 2014 after a realization of a gender gap in the tech industry then um, uh, i joined my one of my one of the three co-founders um, in starting girl code and we started off by just hosting hackathons and we have then since, since um, evolved to an educational um, institution awesome so i mean you did speak a bit to the gender gap that exists in coding um, so why does Girl Code feel it's specifically important for young girls to get into coding? Okay, well, the use of digital skills has obviously become more become part of um, our lives. And with many activities being facilitated by and through the use of technology, technology needs um, girls to help invent the future, um, especially now where there are millions of unemployed young people and 41% of that being women. Um, and the other thing I think it's also, it's very important to break um, existing stereotypes that technology careers are too hard for girls. Um, and also we, I think we need um, women to build technology for women because women understand what women need. Mm, 100%. Um, and speaking a bit to... Um, stereotypes, I was recently found an article, um, which I learned that coding actually used to be an entirely female dominated profession in the 1940s. So during World War Two, there was a team of women who worked on the ENIAC. I'm not sure you say it properly. Um, but basically, some of these women went on to uh, start the development of uh, st computer storage and memory. Um, one of the women con uh, created the first software application. So this is awesome. So it used to be a female-dominated industry, which then shifted to a male-dominated industry. How do we get more women involved in coding? Again. Yes. Um, so how we get um, more women in involved in coding, um, first, we need to start with representation. So the first thing is to ensure that um, the women who are in corporate uh, make it into leadership positions, because at the end of the day, representation matters, right? And I think that as a young girl, you resonate better with someone who looks just like you to give you that extra push. Because when you have someone who looks just like you to look to look up to your ability to thrive and succeed will obviously increase. And yeah. then the other thing is to also tackle girls who are at the much younger um, ages. Because the younger you are, the less um, affected you are by the stereotypes of this world. I think when you're young, you, you have, you're more bold you're more open to taking risks and, and trying new things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at Girl Code, um, our vision is to create a network of women and young girls who are highly skilled um, in software development and leadership skills and who will use these skills to contribute towards an inclusive and innovative um, technology industry, which is why we don't only focus on women, but on young girls as well, because we don't want the youth being left behind. Mm, for sure. Mm -hmm. And you guys have a Girl Coder club which is specifically for young girls. So could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, so our Girl Coder Club is hosted bi-weekly on weekends. So we go out to schools um, and townships around South Africa and we teach coding and robotic skills. Um, so we've realized now with the advancements of technology as well as um, the, the, the 
curriculum in, in, in schools that um, children who are in, in primary as well as high schools, but in private schools specifically, um, get offered coding and robotics as part of their curriculum. Mm. But those who are in government schools, not so much. So we have then taken up this challenge to basically offer this um, at no cost to the more underprivileged um, individuals in the various primary schools and high schools. I love that. I think that's so important, especially because you touched on um, these young girls are so excited to learn. And if you get in there when they're younger, um, we can really start to see some change. So um, looking to the future of coding, um, there's obviously the rise of AI tools and intelligence, um, which can do certain programming themselves or will be able to do certain programming themselves. So do you still think that there is a future in coding? Most definitely. I mean, you just said it yourself. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much technology that will enable many robots to be able to do so many things, which is why, again, it's very important to get young girls and women involved because we need technology that is female friendly and that will understand the correct algorithms, especially with AI basically dealing with um, getting its source from data. But data can't be accurate if it's coming from a man. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely a future in coding, um, especially in artificial intelligence. It's definitely taking over. And hence why even more we need to get more young girls and women into this industry. Yeah, that's such an important point that technology needs to serve everybody. Um, otherwise, it'll just be skewed. So um, exactly. I love that point. Um, so you are getting people involved through some boot camps, which is really exciting. So what does this program aim to achieve um, and how do applications work? Yes, so um, we have partnered with very large um, corporates to train 300 unemployed um, graduates. Um, basically, we have two streams, one being AWS, as well as the other one being Java. The aim of this is to basically bridge the gap between, um, so what we've realized is that in varsity, um, a lot of the STEM related degrees, what you learn there isn't necessarily what corporates are looking for. So we've come in to upskill them with the various um, skills that they lack in order to get them um, into the, the corporates and also get them um, certified. And how you can, how the people can, go by applying for this course is by um, taking our aptitude test which is available on our website um, on www.gocode.co.za as well as on our various social media um, platforms such as twitter which our twitter handle is at gocode underscore za and we're also on facebook at gocode za as well as um on LinkedIn. So yeah, this is a three month program where we upskill um, these various unemployed graduate, female graduates um, with um, either AWS skills and or Java skills, and then also get them certified at the end of the program and then basically get all of them um, employed. And this is also to alleviate the rise um, in unemployment in South Africa, but again, to also get more female um, tech talent into awesome. the corporates yeah yeah we'll have all of that linked in the description box so you guys can check it out um i was wondering before we end off if you could walk us through some coding lingo for the non-coders out there <laughs> sure. okay awesome um what is back-end development so back-end development is more of your, um, your logic, um, information system. Um, so it's the stuff that is not so pretty-like. It's not um, any styling. Um, so yeah, it's more your, um, how, how do I explain this? So it's more like languages that involve your PHP. Um, it's basically about putting um, logic together. And steps. It involves a lot of steps and not so much um, how it will all come together, how it will look. It's not about the look and feel, but definitely, yeah, basically the build up of <laughs> behind the development. scenes. <laughs> yes, behind the scenes. <laughs> Some of the stuff that most people shy away from. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the second one is what is CSS? 
Okay, CSS is um, a programming language, uh, which then focuses on the pretty stuff. You know, it's styling, it involves a lot of styling and making, we'll use an, a website for an example. So you do CSS to basically make your website look better and more user-friendly for your um, users. So that is what um, CSS is basically. It's a programming language to style the specific program that you're trying to build, yeah, or solution. Awesome. awesome. Um, the third one is what is a server? Okay, um, a server is basically either a person or something that provides um, a service or a commodity. So a computer or a computer program which manages um, access to a centralized resource or um, a service in a network. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And the last one is what is the source code? Okay, um, a source code is basically um, a text listing of commands that are to be compiled or assembled into an executable um, computer program. Awesome, cool. So thank you so much for explaining those terms to us. I feel like I've got a little bit of a better grasp on coding. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, bringing it back to Girl Code um, and how people can get involved, do you guys accept volunteers or how can we get involved? Yes, um, we do accept uh, volunteers um, and we do have the various uh, volunteer roles available on our website. So again, um, people are more than welcome to go to our website and then click under volunteer opportunities. There are various opportunities available. Um, so yeah, I mean, we rely heavily um, on our volunteers and we do have a very big team of volunteers that assist us um, to successfully run all the programs that we run. Yeah, and do these volunteers have to have coding experience? Not necessarily, but most of them do as they do assist by being facilitators um, as well as mentors for the various programs that we run. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So maybe for people who don't have a coding background but still want to help, um, I've also seen on your website that you accept uh, donations of secondhand computers and that sort of stuff. So how can people donate? Yes, yeah, so people can donate by either clicking the donate button on our website or they can also donate through um, a platform called For Good. A lot of people use that and that's how they get to reach us um, basically by um, signing up on For Good and then contacting us on For Good. The other way of getting involved is just by emailing us on our info email and just reaching out and saying, hi, um, my name is whoever, I have this to donate and we will then take it from there. Okay, awesome. Okay. We'll have all of that linked in the description box then. Um, thank you so much for sitting down to chat with me and Careers Portal. Um, yeah, I hope that people um, have really found a lot of value in in this conversation. I know how I have. And um, hopefully get involved in the boot camps. I think it's very exciting. Um, I think we could use a lot more women in coding for sure. No, definitely. And thank you so much for affording us um, the platform to obviously talk about the wonderful work that we do at Girl Code. It's always amazing to be able to get the word out there. Oh, of course. I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from us for today. We'll have all of Girl Code's information linked down below as well as our own. Um, and we hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.